Hey guys, in this tutorial, we're gonna learn how to create some blocky voxel art using the free open source program, Magic of Voxel. I'm gonna cover all the basics to get you guys started so you can create your own voxel renders. And honestly, it's as easy as building with Legos. And there's actually even a filter you can use to make your renders look just like that. Guys, this one's gonna be a lot of fun, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, so the first thing we need to do is obviously download Magic of Voxel. If you just Google Magic of Voxel, the GitHub website should be the first result. Here's the site address as well if you want a direct link. I'll also link to the Magic of Voxel website from the blog post for this tutorial. And if you want a link for that, that's gonna be in the description. I also have some project files you guys can download from there if you wanna explore them later on. On the Magic of Voxel homepage, you can download the latest version and then select the version for your operating system. It works with both Mac and Windows. Once you have it downloaded, I recommend unzipping the file and adding it to your documents folder. And from there, you can launch the program. All right, guys, once you've done that, let's go ahead and dive in and learn the basics of Magic of Voxel. So this is the interface of Magic of Voxel and what you're gonna see when you first open up the program. And you can right click with your mouse to rotate around, just hold and rotate. And then you can actually hold down the middle mouse button to kind of pan around, and then you can actually scroll in and out to zoom in and out. Now off the default, we have a brush selected over here and it's currently set to erase. And if I just click, left click and just drag on this cube, you're gonna see I'm erasing some of the cube voxels in this scene. And you can go ahead and try that out just to kind of see how that works. And we're currently in the model view. So you can see that here, we have two different views, the model and the render. Let's just go over to the render view really quickly. And now you can see we get a much more photorealistic rendition of our scene with these shadows and some ambient occlusion. And we have things like a floor. We're gonna come back to the render view later after we create a model and explore that more. Let's jump back over to the model view here. And the other thing you're gonna notice is there's these different panels. So we have a palette panel, brush panel, an edit panel, and the project panel here. And if you actually click on any of these, it will open and close those panels. And let's just start here with the edit panel. So we have some general tools in here and these are good for kind of rotating your scene around. You'll probably use these at the very beginning or the very end with your scene if you're wanting to rotate something or clear something out. Like in this case, I'm probably gonna to wanna to clear out this entire model area. So let's go ahead and click clear. And that gets rid of that default cube that's there from the start. If you do accidentally delete something and you wanna undo it, you can always just hit Control Z, the shortcut there to undo it. I'm gonna go ahead and clear that out again. The other panel on the right hand side here is the project panel. And this is where your project files are actually gonna to save to. And there's quite a few that actually come with Magica Voxel. I can go ahead and click on these. I'm gonna go ahead and click no on that. And it's gonna open up some of these preset up project files and you can explore those. There's a castle one here that's really cool. So you can kind of get a feel for what stuff looks like and come in here and you can change the colors or customize it yourself. Let's go ahead and jump over to the render view here on this one. You can see how cool that looks. And if you'll notice, it's kind of fuzzy when we first jump over to the render view, and that's because it's rendering out the samples. And here's our sample count right up here for the render. And that's what that blue line is, that's loading it. So the further that gets over to the right, the cleaner the image is gonna look. And if we were still getting some noise, we could always bump up this sample count here. And right next to that's also the image size. Again, we'll come back to more of the render settings a little bit later. I just wanted to kind of show you guys what this looked like in the render view with the castle. So let's jump back over to the model view. And at any point in time, if you're designing something and you wanna save your own project file, all you need to do is click on this little save disk icon there, and that will save it. Or if you wanna save as a new project, that's right next to it. And then right next to that, we have a new project. So I'm actually gonna do that. So I'm gonna click new project. It's gonna give us a new cube filled in here. So let's go ahead and clear this out. And for this next part, if you guys just wanna watch me as I kind of demonstrate some of the brushes here before we get to actually building a model. So just sit back here for this next part and I'll show you around some more parts of the interface here. I'm just gonna rotate this again by holding the right mouse button. And I'm gonna come down here, we have some display settings. So what I like to usually see here is the grid. If I go ahead and check this on right down here in the bottom left. You can now see we get a grid. It's just gonna make it a little bit easier. When we're kind of placing objects into our scene. And I also wanna turn on this display shadow. Another thing that's really important when you're first starting out is gonna be the hint menu down here. So you can see you're gonna get this little hint icon. So whatever you hover your mouse over, if I hover it over this brush here, you can see it says box mode. That's gonna tell me down here what that is or what that setting is if it doesn't have a name directly on it. But just look for that little hint name right there at the very bottom of the screen whenever you're exploring different settings here. Maybe there's something I don't cover. So let's look at these brushes here. 
Now on all the panels, we've got different sections here. So you can click on this all and it's gonna display all of the settings that are really in this panel. Or if you want it to be less confusing, you can just click to show certain ones. So just the brush settings here. And this one I could show the display settings. Let's just focus on the brush settings. And the main brushes we're gonna probably use are these bottom three. And then with these three different settings here. So I'll just kind of go over these really quickly. So here is the box brush. And this is the most common one that I typically use. And let's go ahead and set that to be attach. So that's gonna allow us to add blocks into our scene. So I can just click here. We're adding voxels into the scene or I can click and hold and it's gonna create a square or rectangle like shape. And I can add more on top of that. So you can already see we're already able to kind of build in here with the box brush. And again, it's just like building with Legos. Now, if you're wondering why it's adding in blue colors, that's because over here in the palette, the default is this light blue color. And I could click any of these other colors, wanna add a different one. And it'll add in voxels of that particular color. I'll show you guys a little bit more about the color palette in a moment. But let's stay focused on these brushes up here. Now, another brush is gonna be the voxel brush. I'm gonna click on that one. And it works very similar to the box brush in the sense that you can just click and add voxels in here. But you'll notice when I click and drag, it's basically just gonna paint in voxels wherever my mouse is. So it's gonna allow you to kind of draw different designs with that. If maybe you just need a lot of random patterns or like you're adding in grass or something like that, this can be a nice brush for that. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control Z to undo adding that to the scene. And the next brush I wanna show you here is the face mode brush. And what this is gonna allow you to do, it's gonna allow you to add an entire face to whatever area you're working on. So on top of, let's say this uh, square cube right here that I've got, if I click, it's gonna add an entire face to that side. I can do the same thing here. And what's also cool is you can click and hold. You can just drag up and it'll add a whole lot of rows and faces there to this area that I'm working with. So it's a nice way you can add in a lot to your scene really quickly. I can do it here on the side as well. And then finally, let me show you guys the line brush here because these are probably gonna be the four you're gonna use the most. And this one works very similar to the voxel, but in a sense, when I hold down the mouse, it's just kind of adding in all the voxels in a line or in a row, and they're going to kind of keep the same segments there, depending on the angle of them. So it's a nice way you can add in some rows that have any go in here and add them individually, you know, in a line. These other two brushes up here are a little bit more advanced, and you're probably not going to want to use those in the beginning. And again, 90% of the time, I'm pretty much just using this box mode or the face mode brushes. But again, we've been working with these set to attach. So the erase functions for each of these work the exact same way. So I've got box mode selected. So I can come in here and I can click to erase any voxels I've added to the scene. But in box mode, I can also click and I can drag and it'll kind of erase those in a block pattern there or a box pattern. And the same thing would work with the face brush here. If I click on that and I wanna erase on the faces for this side, I can hold down and erase faces from a complete side. Or if I select the voxel brush here, I can kind of erase here, however I want to hover my mouse over and kind of cut that out. That'll work as well. And then finally, paint works exactly the same way as attach, but it's only going to work on existing cubes and it's just going to change the color. So let's go ahead and change the color we have selected here. And I'll go ahead and select this box mode here so I can click. And it's just going to color those that new color. Or I could also click and drag. I want to do a whole section of blocks. And then I could change this maybe to the face tool and I can just click and I'll just change that entire face to that color or maybe if I wanna draw a design, if I select the voxel brush here, we can just draw our own custom pattern here with the voxel brush. I'm gonna go ahead and change this back to box mode and attach. And hopefully by now you guys have a pretty good idea kind of how these brushes work. This probably will get you up and running. Now there's some other secondary brush functions down here. Uh, the first of these is transform. So if I click that one, I can click and I can basically move around everything in my scene. I can offset it and you'll see it'll actually loop if I go all the way to the end kind of of this work area. It'll loop it back around. This can be nice if you need to adjust something by just a few blocks, if maybe when you're creating it, it didn't quite line up. And we have a few other tools in here like this region select, so I can click and drag to select the whole group of voxels. We also have the paint bucket tool here. Just like that, I could change the colors of a lot of voxels at once. And of course we have a trash can, so you can go ahead and delete certain areas if you want to. And then finally, one of the most valuable ones here is gonna be the color picker. So when you have that selected, whatever color I select, when I click it, it's gonna automatically select that color over here in the palette. However, there is a shortcut for this that's much more valuable and I highly recommend it. And that's just gonna to be to hold Alt and then click on whatever color you want. And it'll automatically select that color over here in the palette. Because you can see we have quite a big palette over here and it can be confusing on which shade of color you might have selected for something. And maybe you wanna use that same exact color tone or material on certain objects in your scene. 
So again, the shortcut for that is just gonna be to hold Alt and click on whatever voxel color you're wanting and you'll see it automatically select that. Now, as I mentioned, we do have some display settings up here. So I'm gonna click on that gear icon and that's gonna show us some of these. If maybe we wanted to change the color of the background and this is only gonna be for the model view. It's not gonna affect the actual rendered view and we can change that later if we want to. But again, this is just strictly for the model view here. So I can click on the background here. And I can maybe change that to a different color. I'm gonna leave that back at the dark gray it was before. We we'll also have the same option, change things like the grid color, edge colors, things like that. Very quickly, let me show you guys some of the palette settings here. So again, this is the default palette. It's gonna be when you open up Magica Voxel, but you can see we have several different ones. So we're currently on zero. So you could change this over to one. And you can see when I change that, it changes the colors of everything in our scene. And that's because it's basically mapping to whatever colors in that same position. So that's how that works. You can see when I switch back and forth and you can see we have another palette here, the default two. And then the third palette is basically everything is grayed out so you can customize your own colors. And if you wanna customize your own colors, just come down here to the very bottom where it says color. Go ahead and click that and then you can dial in the color that you want. But you can also change the colors in any of the other palettes and it'll only be for that specific project you're working with. So I come back over here to the original base palette. I can select this blue color here and if I wanna tweak it, maybe make it a little more saturated, I could do that from here and it'll retain that. But again, that'll just be for this project file. All right guys, hopefully you have a pretty good grip on things so far. So let's go ahead and create an 8-bit Game Boy model together. So I'm gonna come back over here and I'm actually gonna clear out everything in the edit panel. That's gonna delete everything from my scene. Now, currently also the world is set up to be 40 by 40 by 40. And if you haven't seen that already, it's right here at the top, kind of the size of our model that we're gonna be creating. And if you wanna change this, you can. I believe it goes up to like 128 uh, is how wide it can go on every side. Actually, no, it goes all the way up to 256. So you can make quite a large area and that's just gonna be for whatever specific model you're using. So you could actually kind of build a fairly good sized world or area just within this space. And you can actually join multiple of these. So you can really create a very huge area to render. And we'll look at that a little bit later on. I'm just gonna leave this at the default 40 by 40 by 40 for this Game Boy model we're gonna create. We're not gonna use nearly that much space, but we can just have it so we can kind of move around the scene. So I'm gonna come over here to the brush panel and I'm gonna click back on the brush icon there. And I'm gonna use the box mode brush. Let's go ahead and select attach. And I'm gonna select this gray color here, right here in the very top left. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna click and hold, I'm gonna drag over three, and I'm still holding down the mouse, and I'm gonna drag over now, probably about 10 in width. And now when you're doing this, if you can't tell how many you're adding to the scene, you can look right down here, you can see this when I click, it's gonna show me how many on the X and Y axis that I'm adding, so you can see what I'm doing there. Right now it's three on the Y and 10 on the X. So that's actually gonna be perfect for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave that there as is. And obviously I wanna get rid of this first one I created. So I'm gonna select erase here for the box brush. And I'll just drag across that to erase it. So let's go back over to attach. Now this is kind of the bottom area of our Game Boy and I want this to be probably 15 high across the whole thing. So I'm gonna select the face tool here. And with it set to attach still, I'm gonna click and hold. And you can see it says one layer there. So I'm just gonna keep lifting up with the mouse until this is probably 14 and that'll be 15 with the original one we had there at the bottom. So there's basically the outline of our Game Boy. Now Game Boys actually have a little bit of a rounded corner down here at this bottom, and it's kind of tough for us to emulate that with something that's so square shaped, but I'm just gonna erase these bottom three voxels here. So I'm gonna select the box mode brush and set it to erase, and I'm just going to click on each of those to erase them. So now let's add in the D-pad to our Game Boy. I'm actually just gonna paint that on so with the box brush still selected, I'm gonna select paint, and I'm gonna click on this color that's right underneath the two there, kind of this little bit darker than middle gray. And I'm gonna come over here, and I'm gonna go up just a little bit here, I'm gonna click, and I'm just clicking to paint that onto the model. And if you guys accidentally mess up or add something where you didn't mean to, again, you can always use Control Z to undo it. Now let's go ahead and add in the start and select buttons down here. So I'm gonna select another gray color here, one of the middle gray colors, and I'll just click on two different faces there to add those in. And now we can go ahead and add in the buttons. And for the buttons, let's find kind of a maroonish red color and we may need to tweak this a little bit more. So I'm just gonna select one of these maroon red colors over here. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna paint in two buttons. And that's a pretty good color match there uh, in my opinion, but if you did wanna tweak it again, you can just come down here with that color selected and the color options and just click on that to toggle it. And you can always tweak the saturation of the colors 
or adjust it if you're working with a little bit different shade of red. All right, so let's add a border around our screen that's gonna be on here. I'm gonna select another one of the middle gray colors. And again, with the box brush selected, I'm just gonna click and I'm gonna drag and kind of create a almost square-like shape. It's a little bit of a rectangle there. That's gonna be the outline for our screen. And then for the screen, again, this is gonna be a retro style Game Boy, so I want one of those kind of like muddy green colors here for kind of the background of the screen. So I'm gonna click on this one here, and I'll just come in here and drag and add in a box for that. Now, if you want to, you can add a little bit more finesse to this by painting in some of the dials here on the side and adding a game cartridge to the back. So I'm just gonna select one of those darker black colors here, right up here, almost all the way completely black. And I'm just gonna paint on a little bit there on the side. And that'll be like the volume dial. And then over here on this one, I believe there's like a contrast dial on the retro Game Boys there for that. And let's go ahead and paint in a cartridge. So you can select any color you want for your cartridge. I'm just gonna select another red color here. So this will probably be Pokemon Red in a sense. And again, with paint selected, I'm just gonna paint across the top here. And let's go ahead and go down probably like three rows. So there's the cartridge sitting in the back of the Game Boy. Now, after we have this built, before we jump over to the render settings, let's look at this view cube down here. If you haven't noticed that already, it kind of rotates around whenever I rotate around my scene. And this is nice for snapping to different angles and sides. So you can just click on that. And it'll automatically rotate to that perspective. And we also have four different camera viewing modes. So again, the default here is perspective. So this kind of looks correct the way we would see this object with our own eyes. We have another one which is free. This is almost kind of like you're holding a camera, rotating it around. And this is something you'll probably use more before you render a scene out. And we have this ortho camera, which is very similar to isometric, but we can actually rotate around using this one. This is a pretty cool looking view. And then we have the traditional isometric view, which really lets you rotate around it kind of at this 45 degree angle. I'm gonna change this back to your perspective for now, but you can always switch between any of those depending on how you like to work or how you wanna export it with the render. So now let's jump over to the render view. And now we can see our Game Boy here. Looks very nice, it's shaded in here with the scene. And we can dial in some different render settings and make this look pretty cool. So one thing you're gonna notice when we switch over to the render view is that some of these settings and panel names have changed. So now we have the light panel over here and we have the matter panel over on this side. And these are gonna allow us to dial in kind of the look of our object or our scene before we render. So let's just start with the light panel and you can see we have options here for the lighting settings, that's the default. And you can see we have a sun here so we can adjust the angle. You can see how that's affecting the shadows there on our object. And you have area, so this is basically how big is the light. So if I leave this all the way at the bottom, it's gonna be very sharp shadows. If I increase this, we're gonna get some very soft lighting here on this object. And then you have the intensity, you can adjust the intensity of the light. So if I want it to be really like a sunny day, I could dial this up all the way, bring the area really far down because the sun, you know, is a very small dot in the sky. So you can see how this looks on the Game Boy. But then we also have some secondary lighting here with the actual sky itself. So this is kind of giving us that extra ambient light. And so you can dial in the intensity of that. So if I actually dial this down, it almost looks like this is like moonlight now. And I could dial this back up, maybe make the area on the sun quite a bit bigger. So we get some really nice soft lighting. And we have a few different sky options here as well. The default is uniform and I typically use that. We also have this atmospheric scattering one if you maybe wanted to change the colors of this and have it match a certain tone. And then finally, we also have this image-based lighting. And it's essentially gonna light the scene using an HDRI image. You can see this 360 image here. You can actually click on that. Magic Voxel comes actually with four different HDRIs you can change between, or if you have your own custom one, you could load that in there as well. And all you need to do is just click on it and hit open. I'm actually gonna cancel out of that. And you can also rotate the HDRI here with this panel. So if you really want to have some photorealistic renders, rendering with an HDRI sky can be very valuable. Again, for this example, I'm just gonna go ahead and change this back to the default uniform lighting. We also have options here for the fog. And if you ever see one of these next to anything, it's just color, you can go ahead and dial in a certain color there if you want as well. The next options we have here is the sample settings and typically you're not gonna need to adjust many of these. If you wanna explore these more, you definitely can. They can create some cool effects here with certain things. Let me jump back over here to the sun. I'm gonna make this a very small area and get a sharp shadow here. And you may be able to notice a difference here when I check on this pixelated setting. You can see it kinda gives you these pixelated shadows and pixelated colors on things. So there's different things you can play around with for those, but a lot of times adjusting these is really more for specialized cases. Now let's come back over here and look at the display settings. Now these are actually gonna be the display settings that will render out with this when we're done. 
So you see we also have the ground here. I can go ahead and change the color of this. Let's make this more of like a yellow color tone. Maybe like an orange. So now you can see we've changed the color of the ground. And then if we wanted to, we could also turn on a grid pattern for this, makes it look pretty neat. So those are actually gonna be down here at the very bottom. So I can check on to display grids, and then we'll add a grid over everything here. You can also display the edges, and I'll kind of make those a little bit more bolder. And you can change the grid colors and thickness and things like that if you do wanna have those on. I'm actually going to turn those back off. One other thing I wanna mention, if you do wanna render something, you don't want it to have a ground layer, you can also turn that off down here as well. So I can check that off. And that would just render out whatever your background color is but you can also set that to be transparent. So again, you can render this with an alpha channel if you want to. I'm gonna go ahead and check that back off and turn back on, display the background so we can get those shadows coming through there. The other thing that's super cool in the display settings here is gonna be the shape. Let's go ahead and toggle this down and the default is cube, but you can just click on this and change it to Lego and you can see what that did here. It changed our model to now have these Lego shapes on top of it and so that will essentially change everything in your scene to Legos. Let's just jump back over to the model view really quickly. I'm gonna use the box brush here with attach. Let's go ahead and change the color of this to a different color. I'll just add in some blocks here. And let's go back over to the render view. And now we can see those look like Lego pieces. Again, that's by changing this shape here from cube to Lego. So that's really neat. We can also change it to other shapes. There's clay. This will kind of give it more of like a melted look. We also have things like spheres. So you can actually change this to where everything looks like a sphere and then also cylinders. I'm gonna go ahead and change that back to cube because the cube shape is really what Magic of Voxels designed around and it's gonna work with the different material and matter settings we're gonna explore over here the best. Certain materials and matters won't work as well with other shapes like Lego. When we get into things like glass and clouds and things like that. So with that being said, let's jump over to the matter panel and the default settings here we have is the material settings. And this is gonna allow us to change how our materials look here for this rendered view. And you can also do the color picker shortcut here in the rendered view. So if I hold Alt and I click on the Game Boy white color there, it'll automatically select that color. And if we wanna add any material properties to this color while we have it selected, we can do that over here. So currently it's set to diffuse, so it's just a diffuse standard material. But let's say I wanted to make this more metallic. I could click on metal, again, while that color is selected over here in the palette. And this will allow us to add in some secondary settings here. So let's dial up the metallic all the way. And now you can see it's actually reflecting things from the scene. And so we've kind of given that material a very metallic. So right now it's basically chrome because we've dialed it up all the way. If you want to add some roughness to it, you can do that and it'll kind of give it a more of a glossy look or you can dial it back down. So it's basically just going to be like a mirror and you can kind of get a mix between the two colors. Now we have more of that kind of white reflective color there on the Game Boy. But that's essentially how the materials work. So you just, while you have that color selected over here in the palette, you can change it to these different material types. And we're gonna explore more of these and get really abstract at the end. I'm gonna change this material back to diffuse for the time being. And at this point, let's go ahead and just render out our image that we've currently created. Again, because everything kind of passes, gets into more abstract and a little bit more advanced, but I am gonna show you guys more of that. But if you're just ready to render right now, let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So up here, we have basically our image size. So you can set this up. The default is 960 by 800. I may change this to be 1080. And I'll change both of those so it's perfectly square. So we're setting this up for Instagram. And again, I told you about the sample size here. And that's really gonna be how clear it's gonna render everything. This is not a very complex scene. So the default 1024 should be just fine. Now, while you see that blue bar rendering up here, you're gonna wanna wait for that to go all the way across. And that's gonna be essentially finished rendering. So if you wanna export something, all you need to do is come down here to this little camera icon and that's gonna say capture image. So I'm just gonna click that. And that's gonna open up the Explorer and allow us to save this out as a PNG or a JPEG. I highly recommend saving this out as a PNG as it's gonna retain a lot more detail. So I can just go ahead and name this Game Boy. And go ahead and click save. And now it's went ahead and saved out our image. Now there's also some export settings in Magic of Voxel. If you come down here at the bottom of the project panel here, you'll see export. Go ahead and click on that. And here's all the different exports you can do uh, one of the most popular ones is gonna be OBJ. So if I export this out as an OBJ, it would export this model of the Game Boy and actually the Lego pieces as well. And it'll export out a material that has all this color palette to it. So when you import that OBJ into something like Blender, or maybe if you're working in After Effects with Element 3D, it'll retain the colors. Now it will not retain these material settings as these are only gonna be set up here within Magica Voxel. That's kind of their own material structure. 
but it will retain the colors that you've set from the palette. A couple other cool exports you can do are exports like the isometric pixel sprite. Those look really cool. I'll show you guys a quick image of what that looks like when you export something from that view. And then also this 2D sprite export, that's gonna do like a front facing view. Looks like a little typical pixel icon of whatever you created. And again, we can kind of get an idea of what that 2D view looks like here. If we change this over to perspective and just click on the front facing view here, you can kind of see there's what that would kind of look like, the shape of it for that 2D icon. Something else with the camera is you can always render out in these different camera views. Again, currently we're in perspective, but again, I really like the orthogonal view here and you can rotate around with it. It kind of gives you like an isometric view, but you can again, rotate and view it from many different angles. But if you do want to keep it truly isometric, you can click on that and you can kind of rotate around this 45 degree angle. So it makes it really easy to get some cool kind of stylized looks with these different views. All right, now let's look at a few more abstract things and just some other side note things I want to show and cover for you guys here. If you're still with me, uh, to kind of give you a little bit more feature set here that's involved with Magica Voxel. Before we move any further, I do want to save out my current project. So I'm just going to come up here and click Save. I'll just call this Game Boy Tutorial and go ahead and click Save. And you can see that here over here in the project panel. That is our project file we just saved out. Now let's go back over to the model view and I'm going to select the box tool. I'm actually going to erase these extra Legos we added in here because I want to show you something with the edit panel. I'm just going to erase those out. Now currently you can see how we built our model. Let me change this back to perspective view as well. We have a few other settings here and one of them is this 2x and half. So this is really cool because if we want, if we've built something small, but maybe we want to build it a little bit bigger, maybe we want to add a little more detail to it. You can do that really easily with this 2x tool. So I'm just going to click that and you're going to see immediately it's made everything in our model view here twice as big. So it changed it from 40 by 40 by 40 to now be all 80. And if you look at this, our Game Boy now has twice as many voxels it's made up of. Actually four times as many, because you can see the face of these buttons used to just be one voxel, now they're four. So this can be nice if you're going to add a lot more detail to something. Or it can work the other way, you can actually click the half and that'll bring it back to what it was. Or I could half that again, it's gonna get really small. You can see there's not even enough voxels here for our entire design. So I'm actually gonna undo that, because if I actually resize that, it won't map those colors correctly. And again, the flip and rotate settings over here you can click on those to rotate objects around. And you can see I've accidentally inverted the model, so I'm actually gonna flip that back on the X axis so it's facing the right way. But that's a few other edit settings that I did wanna show you guys. Now let's get to some really cool stuff and jump back over to the rendered view. And I wanna show you guys how to do some emit materials and glass materials and stuff like that. So I'm gonna zoom in here on the Game Boy. And I want this to be more of a nighttime scene. So let's come back over here to our lighting on the sun. I'm gonna bring the intensity all the way down. Now we're bringing the sky intensity down quite a bit as well. So we just kind of have this dusky looking scene. And let's go ahead and let's change the ground color here. I want that to be more of a gray color tone. Just so everything's pretty flat. And that's gonna work pretty good for us there. Now let's go ahead and select our screen material colors. I'm gonna hold Alt and just click on the screen. That's automatically gonna select that color over here. So let's come over to the matter settings under material and let's select emit. So this is gonna kind of make this light up in our scene. You can see it's already kind of glowing, but it doesn't have a lot of power behind it. So let's go ahead and crank up the emission and crank up the power sitting there. Now you can see light's actually coming through and it's actually lighting up the ground. So that's pretty neat. So there's actually light coming from the screen. And if it's too bright here, you can always adjust this with this low dynamic range, but I'm actually wanting this to be very, very bright. And I'll show you why when we get into a few more of the render settings. I may even bump this up a little bit more. So it's completely blown out right now. And now let's go over to the show camera settings here. And we have quite a few different camera settings. So the first is gonna be aperture and you can crank this up if you wanna add a really shallow depth of field. And the way you set the depth of field is basically just clicking, left clicking on something in your screen. So you can see I clicked on this corner. And as I let this render, you're gonna see that's gonna stay in focus because we're dealing with a very, very shallow depth of field. And you can see all the buttons down here are starting to fall out of focus in the bottom corner of the Game Boy is falling out of focus. But you can adjust that level with the aperture. I'm actually wanting everything to be in focus, so I'm gonna bring this all the way back down for the time being. And you have a few more settings you can adjust with the depth of field to dial in kind of some more realistic looks. But what I'm gonna show you guys here is these bloom settings. So we toggle this open. It's gonna add an extra kind of secondary glow to anything that we have emitting light. And you'll see this little play icon right here. Go ahead and click that. And now look at how our render looks. And you'll see another bar down here, and that's the bloom render. So whenever you have anything kind of doing this secondary glow, it's gonna render it separately from kind of the main image. And that's what this second rendered line down here is. So if I rotate this any at all, 
Now just let it sit. You're gonna see it's gonna render at the top for the actual base image. And then that extra glow is gonna be rendering down here. So let's change this over to an isometric view and just kind of see how this looks. So that's kind of the basics of setting up an emitting material. If we go back over to the emit material with that selected, I could even crank up the power of this even more all the way to full blast. You can see how bright that is, really blowing everything out. And you can see it's lighting up everything in front of the Game Boy. So that's probably gonna be a little too intense. I'll just dial this back down. So now we're creating a pretty cool scene, really nice lighting fall off from around the screen there. It looks really cool. Now let me show you guys a little bit of the glass settings. I'm actually gonna use that castle model. So I'm just gonna click on the castle model here and it's asking me if I wanna save this out. I'll just go ahead and click yes. And now we can look at this castle here in the rendered view. And I'm gonna hold Alt and click, so it'll select the material that's on this castle. We can see that here. Let's go ahead and change the color of that from this tan color. So I'm just gonna make this more of a blue color tone. And let's go ahead and convert this to be glass now. So again, with that color selected over here, let's go over to the matter. And I'm gonna select glass. And let's come down here to transparency and just crank this all the way up. And now you can see we've converted that to be this solid glass material here for that castle. And right now it's crystal clear. So I go ahead and increase the roughness here a little bit and it'll kind of give it more of like that frosted glass look. So that's really neat. And we have the index of refraction. You can crank that up and that's gonna kind of change how it looks. And we have a few other secondary absorption settings down here you can toggle between uh, if you want it to be different between like clouds or subsurface scattering. So when I crank that up, we're getting more of a subsurface scattering material. So it almost kind of looks like candle wax in a sense or like a bar of soap. And there are similar settings on these other materials like blend and cloud. Blend is actually one that works really well if you're wanting to set up kind of a candle waxy material because it's gonna give you options here for metallic and then you also have that kind of subsurface scattering options down here as well that you can adjust. And then you also have cloud and that's gonna give you more of like cloud properties on this. You can see how it's kind of giving a smoke look. And you'll just have to play with these settings, kind of dial in the look for your scene. I'm gonna change this back to glass because that's really what I like here. Now on glass, the default down here is gonna be this absorb media. So you can see we selected that blue color, but right now it's pretty clear. If we go ahead and increase the density here, it'll kind of retain more of that actual original color, even though the transparency is cranked up all the way to 100%. I'm gonna bring this roughness back down so we get this really glassy looking castle. And again, if I was wanting to render something like this out, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that it's fully rendered up here with the blue bar and the yellow bar. Just wait for those to get all the way over to the right and then you're good to go when you wanna export and just click on that camera icon down there and that will export out your image. All right guys, I thought it was done, but one final thing, cause I don't wanna leave you guys hanging with this one just in case you run into this issue. Let's switch back over to the model view. And I'm gonna come back over here to our edit. And if you do the two times where it's gonna multiply this, double the size, if we go back over to the render view, you might notice that half of the model now is actually underneath the floor plane. And this was an issue I couldn't figure out for the longest time. So let's jump back over to the model view. And that's because we need to come over here to the world view. So you can click on this icon here. It's gonna switch you to the world view. And this is when you wanna add in multiple kind of model objects to the scene. But you can see here in this world view, our castle is below floor layer. If I change this to perspective, we can see that. So if I exported this out right now as an OBJ and I brought it into Blender, half of this model would be underneath the floor plane. But all you need to do is click on this and drag it up and it'll just lift it above the floor plane there and you can kind of see when it is there. Now, if we go back over to our render view, it's gonna be above the ground here and look correct. Typically, again, you probably won't run into this issue unless you're using some of these edit settings here and you do something like that two times to make your model bigger. And again, all you need to do to switch between this worldview is just click on a little icon there and that'll switch you between the worldview and the model view. Again, 99% of the time, you're probably gonna be working in this model view right here. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed learning about Magic of Voxel. Give us a thumbs up if you did and let us know in the comments if you want any more Magic of Voxel tutorials in the future. There's quite a bit you can do with this program. And don't forget to head over to the blog post if you wanna download some extra scenes that I create if you wanna break those down as well. Again, I'm Charles Jaeger with Premium B and I'll catch you guys on the next one.